past seven. The Radio Waymo Breakfast. Jeff Dudas from UnderwaterTimes.com. All the great stories uh, from around the world. If it happens under the water, Jeff Dudas has it UnderwaterTimes.com. Jo- Jeff Dudas joining us in Miami. Hello, Jeff. Hey, Waymo. How are you doing? Very good. First up t- today, a story about a secret shark. Yeah, this uh, story comes from Blackpool in England, and there's an aquarium there, and they were inspecting the aquarium one day, and they found this uh, shark egg. It looked like a shark egg, and the curators were kind of scratching their head because all the sharks in the tank uh, give birth live, and so uh, it really shouldn't be there. So they started looking at it closer, and they thought that maybe it was just uh, an artificial egg that someone placed there when they installed the aquarium but no they pulled it out and it was a real live shark shark egg so they started scratching their heads and really scratching their heads uh and and started looking around the tank they couldn't find the shark that laid it and a couple weeks passed and they found another one and another shark egg and so there's a big mystery now they still haven't found the shark huh. but it keeps laying eggs <laughs> and uh so they're they're now they're asking the public uh to try to find this shark for them and they figured out what type of shark. It's a carpet shark. And these sharks um, basically, kind of like the name, they sit on the bottom and they just lie very still. So they're, they're thinking this shark uh, is maybe uh, scared or something and it's you know because there's other sharks around and it just stays in hiding all day. So no one remembers putting a carpet shark into the aquarium in the first place? No, 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 nobody, nobody. That, that's, that's sort of the mystery. It's just wow. uh, no one knows how it got there. It's just... Uh, you know, the only way they discovered it is to, to start laying eggs. And so this is also interesting. So the, some sharks give live birth and some lay eggs. Yes. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. And what, yeah. what does a shark egg look like? I mean, is it quite big? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's sort of like a pod. Uh, I've seen pictures of them a lot. Uh, it's sort of brown and it's a pod, um, sort of slender, almost looks like a seed. Uh, it doesn't even really look like, uh, you know, it's, it looks very odd, but, uh, uh, you know. It's, uh, I guess if you're in Blackpool, uh, you can uh, go, go take a look. Wow, fascinating stuff. All right, next story. Um, this is something that we've wanted to do for a long time, talk to the animals, but um, specifically talk to the dolphins. Yeah, it, it's an interesting story. Uh, there, there's a new project launched to uh, try to really go after uh, understanding what dolphins are, are saying. Um, I think since probably about the 1960s, they started really getting into this training dolphins and such. Uh, but, you know, as, as you might, might expect, it's been a one-way uh, sort of communication. We, we, we can uh, teach them uh, various uh, uh, tricks or, or, or behaviors, and they, they figure a dolphin can probably learn about 100 of these behaviors, and they're fairly sophisticated. But it's basically us telling them something, and they go do it, yeah. and they get a reward. So now they're, they're going to go after this um, and come up with this computer and this computer software and these hydrophones. It's basically like a little smartphone and a hydrophone. You take underwater and you listen to the dolphins and you try to figure it out, you know, what they're trying to say. But even that, they're, they're sort of scratching their head because, uh, you know, sort of where do you start yeah. when you don't know what they're saying? You don't know if they use words or such. So they're going to start by uh, just, uh, you know, projecting these basic words like uh, like a seaweed or something and see if they respond and, and see if they can figure out, you know, basic sort of nouns like seaweed or, or, or sponge or something. And if they uh, respond back to that, they'll know, hey, they got something. And then they'll try to do it again uh, where uh, they'll try to associate words with behaviors. Hmm. So that's sort of the ultimate where you, you, you can really start communicating with them. So I guess you come up with some kind of dictionary, I suppose. Right, right. So uh, hmm. I, I was thinking about this. You know, if this actually works out, you know, uh, you figure out what they're saying. You know, perhaps, uh, you know, if the dolphins tell you, like, you know, like, where's the ocean or, you know, the food's terrible here. <laughs> yeah. or, you know, where, where are the babes at? You know, it just sort of raises all sort of uh, implications uh, if you could really understand them. So yeah. it's well, interesting to see where this goes. Yeah, exactly. Well, we know dolphins are smart. But we also know that whales are um, are smart as well, and um, and they travel very long distances. But um, scientists are baffled by one particular journey that's been taken. Yeah, and this is they've they've been studying the journeys of uh, humpback uh, whales, and they they go on these incredible journeys, like ten thousand mile journeys, and they they put satellite tri- uh, uh, transponders on them. 
and they figured out they, they travel almost in a straight line, and, the, and, and most of them never vary more than five degrees off this straight line. And, and in fact, most of them never vary more than one degree. Hmm. So it's just like these incredible straight, like, you know, like you're traveling from, you know, here to 5,000 miles away, and you basically never get lost, and you go almost in a straight line. And they're trying to figure out, well, what it, you know, what, what's going on here? How are they doing it? Are they using the sun? Are they using sort of, you know, mag, the Earth's uh, magnetic, uh, uh, you know, natural like compass and internal compass? Hmm. And they figured out, you know, a lot of animals do that actually use the sun or, or an internal compass. But um, they figured out with, with these humpback whales, it just can't be those two because if you use the sun, you have to have a reference, and in the open ocean, there's no real reference. So they figured out it's not just the internal compass; it's not just the sun. They're probably using the stars. Crikey! Too. So they're just you know these incredible uh, na- navigators that uh, nobody really knew until now. Isn't that amazing? And then that that all that knowledge is somehow handed down in the in the genetics of the I, it, of the beast. It sort of boggles the mind how yeah. they figure it out. And yeah, and how you know are they are they uh, you know just another more communication between themselves? Do they teach you? each other this or, or they just learn it or, or what but uh, they're doing it amazing stuff well those stories you'll find up at underwatertimes.com and Jeff will join us again in two weeks thanks Jeff yep thanks for having me see ya that's Jeff Dudas in Miami uh, 24 minutes